told you, like, plenty of people with me, Marla, and Debbie. So I don't get why you're not going. Is it because he'd just get wound up and shout the odds? No, nothing like that. He's just respecting my wishes, that's all. You ready? Two takes. Hey, try not to worry. I'm fine. You'd be strong for me, too. Bye. Bye. Good luck. No oh, kitchen. Cool. So Laurel's got the day off, has she? Mm -hmm. Maybe she can come back and help back up here. No, she's going to support Lisa, isn't she? What all day? I bet Lisa will be dead nervous. I know I was. Oh, well, you've got to admire our guts. Now, what room do you want that going into? Yellow. This colour coding of the box is a very good idea of Brenda's, isn't it? Brilliant. I'll put the kettle on. Why don't you go back home and make a brew there? Well, I was going to give the place a good going over for you. What, for Declan's benefit? No, he can pay someone to come in and do it. Actually, uh, I'd rather finish off on my own if it's all the same to you. I understand, love. Different standard of cleanliness, you and me. But no, you just do your best. Declan should be grateful. Oh, hiya. Door was open. Um, I've come to collect the keys. Oh, well, you're not finished yet? I told your father that I would drop them off at the end of the day when they are due. And that is what I am going to do. Bag, will you? Let's have some tea bags down the side. Oh, oh, is that all of them? Yeah, I manage, thanks. Oh, this place is lovely, isn't it? Perfect. Yeah, great. You know, you've done well to get this place at short notice. It's a lot better than the leaky caravans we used to stay in when you was a kid, eh? Uh, there's the abbey that I wanted to show you. I mean, it's a bit of a walk, and there's 199 steps to the top, but you can manage that, can't you? And if you don't fancy the scenic route, we'll always get a cab to take us. There's a car park round about. If I end up pushing her off a cliff this week, you'll back me up, won't you, say it was an accident? Um, her name's Claire, I think. She's talking to the prosecutor. Yeah, Mr Trent. He's very nice. Is it? Oh, well, that's good, yeah. You feeling all right with not too many collie bubbles? I just want to get in there now, really. Are you sure you don't want to go to another room? I mean, if it was me, I think I'd want a screen or something. No, I need to face him. And he needs to face me. I'm so sorry for the delay. Uh, any idea how much longer? Uh, five minutes, with a bit of luck. And then it's just my opening speech and I'll be calling you straight in. It'll soon be over. <laughs> Could I have a word, please? Yes, of course. That's the defence barrister, just so you know. <laughs> it's a typical trick, that, you know. Getting a woman to defend him. Oh, I'm chuck some of them teas. Feeling a bit parched. The Crown versus Benrose, court one. At last. Good luck, Lise. You keep strong, I love. <laughs> Be fine. Why do I have to dust all the bottles? Because you skimped on it whilst you were doing the cleaning earlier. And besides, it's in a barmaid's job description, that is. Have you ever had a job description? No. I'll tell you what, I'll write you one up whilst you're dusting all them bottles out the back. Right. But, I can work with her. I mean, I have to like her. Uh, yeah. White wine spritzer. I w hey, I was <sighs> thinking about going to the, the pictures tomorrow night, um, if you're up for it. Nicole, um, I'm really sorry if I've led you on or anything. I just, I just feel it's a bit too soon to start seeing anyone like this, you know? No. <laughs> sure. 
I understand. It's your loss, though. I was, uh, was going to book the uh, push seats. <laughs> Same again. So what's your problem with Alicia? It's all right. I get it. You used to be the young totty behind the bar, didn't you? Back in the day. In the 90s. Look at you trying to get a rise out of me. <laughs> Well, seeing as you're still so upset by it all, you can have this pint on me. Chaz! Don't worry. I wasn't going to chuck it all over him. I appreciate your custom too much. Next! <laughs> I'd like to call my first witness, Mrs Lisa Dingle. Call Lisa Dingle. Please confirm your full name. Lisa May Dingle. Please, take the Bible in your right hand and read aloud the words on the card. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Would you say that your marriage was on the whole a happy one? Yeah. And that Derek wasn't just a work colleague, he became a friend of the family? Yeah. We had no idea what he was really like back then. He was uh, amiable, jolly, uh, a good laugh, you said. It seemed to be, yeah. But events that night in the factory took a darker turn. Why were you there? We'd stop behind to do a bit of overtime, making boxes for Easter eggs. Do you often work overtime? When I've needed to, yeah. But not with him. I want his usual job. Can you tell me what happened that night in the factory? Were you and the defendant working alone? Yeah. We were flagging a bit, so I said I'd go and make us a brew while he carried on with the boxes. But he followed me into the staff room. Go on. And... That's when it started. When he started to attack me. But at first I thought he was just teasing like normal, so I told him not to be so daft. But he changed. His voice has changed. It's gone all harsh and it's like... I don't know him. Would you like a glass of water, Mrs Dingle? No, Ta, I'd, I'd just like to get on and tell you if that's all right. All right. Uh, so, he's got his hands. And? Yeah, well, like I said, he were all over me, and um, I tried to laugh it off at first. I'm sorry, I've changed my mind. Please, can I have that glass of water? Yes, yes, of course. Are you all right to continue? Yes, Your Honour. I am now, thanks. You were saying how you tried to make light of his behaviour at first. Yeah. But he kept telling me I wanted him, and I didn't. I was terrified. So you made it clear that you didn't want to have intercourse with him? Of course I did, but he wouldn't listen. He kept saying that I wanted it as much as he did. He wouldn't let me go. I tried to push him off. I clocked him on, in fact. He grabbed me even tighter and I couldn't move. Pushed me back towards the lockers. He slammed me into them. He 
turned out the light. He forced me to. As he was forcing himself upon you, what was going through your mind? I couldn't believe what was happening to me. I just froze. I said, no, Derek. No, please don't. He knew I didn't want it. But he carried on and did it anyway. And afterwards, I felt ashamed, disgusted, dirty. Has this had an effect upon your marriage? Yeah. You said your marriage was a happy one. It was. Until that animal raped me. Are you all right? No. I'm a single parent. Let's not forget, my boss has just evicted me. At all? Not quite, no. I was living with my dad. Bad enough, some might say, but... Now we're both homeless. I'm relying on the charity of a woman who can only be described as... Tactless, but well-meaning. <laughs> Don't forget kind, but stupid. <laughs> I just wish I could have bought this place for you and Angel. A secure home for you, at least. I'm your father. I should be able to protect you. Hey. Can't stay your little princess forever. Yes, you can. <laughs> Shall we look on the bright side of life? You told the court that your boss, Mr. Jay Sharma, asked for volunteers. Yeah, that's right. So you volunteered knowing it would just be you and Mr. Benrose staying behind? Yeah. But no, well, I mean, I didn't know that at first. He wasn't even trained in packing. He offered after I did. So how did you feel when you realised it would just be the two of you? Well, pleased I suppose I wasn't going to be stuck with it on my own. Do you recall your fellow workers teasing you about wanting to spend time alone with him that night? <sighs> they were just messing. This teasing about your crush on Mr Benrose... It was a frequent occurrence? It, it was just banter. It goes on all the time. So in your workplace, women are often teased about extramarital affairs with their husband's friends? They knew there were nothing in it. For goodness sake, they'd have gossiped behind my back if they really thought that, wouldn't they? I'm sure they would. You told my learned friend that you and your husband enjoyed a happy relationship before you got involved with my client. Your Honour... I believe counsel is merely following up on your earlier line of questioning, Mr. Trent. But please be mindful of your choice of words. Continue. Obliged. It is our case that you openly flirted with Mr. Benrose and enjoyed the factory banter. But it went too far, didn't it? He flamed me, well raped me. So you say Mr. Benrose will deny that. Do you deny that you let him kiss you on the night before the alleged rape? That was nothing. It was just a peck on the cheek. A thank you for letting him stop over. Did you object to him kissing you in your own home whilst your husband was upstairs in your marital bed? Yes or no? It was nothing. Yes or no? No. Ah, a small thank you. Oh, ta. Hey, that'll go lovely with the poached salmon later. It is still your favourite food, isn't it? Salmon? Yeah. I think we're going to get along just fine together, the four of us. And as a precaution, I've done a list of house rules. Well, it's more a division of labour, really. You know how I like cooking and cleaning and everything just so. 
Well, it's just a few things to oil the wheels of contentment. Shoes, Rodney. You told my learned friend earlier that Mr. Benrose knew you didn't want to have intercourse with him. How, exactly? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. Did you say things like... Stop? Help? For instance? Like I said, when he first grabbed me, I thought he was messing. So I said... Get your hands off me, something like that. Something like that. But then when he wouldn't let go, I definitely told him to get off me. I said stop, I said no. What about during the act? Did you use those words again? Or were you silent? Well, I can't remember. I might have done. I didn't know what he might do if I made a fuss. I were crying. But were you silent during the actual act? I just closed my eyes. Waited for it all to be over. Were you silent? Yes or no? Yes. And would you say you were in fear of your life or serious injury then? And may I remind you, you're under oath, Mrs Dingle? I didn't know what else you were capable of, did I? You were hurting me. I had bruises. Do you have any photographs of these bruises? No. Why not? They'd faded, the bruises. Faded? Because you didn't report the alleged incident for quite some time. Your Honour, please rephrase the question. How long did you wait before reporting the alleged rape to the police? I don't know. Six weeks, maybe. Seven weeks, in fact. I didn't want my family dragged through all this. I, I knew what it would be like. You lot wouldn't believe me. What happened directly after the alleged rape? My client recalls you shared a cup of tea with him. He'd locked us in. I tried to stay calm. Tried to talk my way out of there. And after you'd had the cup of tea? What happened then? I asked him for the keys. I said I wanted to go home. And he agreed. Didn't he? Mrs Dingle... Please confirm in words. Yes. He even offered to walk you home, didn't he? But your husband arrived, looking for you, with your daughter. Yes. According to my client's statement, you all stood and had a chat. Why didn't you tell your husband about your ordeal? I couldn't. Not then, not in front of Belle. Why not later? It never seemed the right time. I just, I couldn't. It is our case that you flirted with my client, volunteered to spend time alone with him, overcame a guilty conscience and consented to sex that night. It was only later that you began to feel remorse and regret, feared you may be found out. No, it wasn't like that. He might have taken the banter the wrong way, but I didn't give him the right to do what he did. Thank you. No further questions. No, listen to me. I just want to get out, get home safe. I never cheat on my husband. I never want to hurt him. Thank you, Mrs. Dingle. That will be all. Sorry, can only get fizzy. That's all right, cheers. Think of the Abbey then. Could do with a bit of scaffolding, could it? I don't know why they don't just rebuild it. Because ruins are romantic. Bram Stoker wrote Dracula after he saw this place. I'm doing tours later if you fancy it. Yeah, could be something to do. Your dad used to call them flying rats. You know, they'd scoop down and take a chip out your hand if you let them. Survivors, aren't they? Used to love them when you was a kid. Used to like running into them, didn't you? They'd always leave it till the last minute to fly off once they realised that you meant it and weren't going to stop. I used to think when I was a kid that I could take off with them. It was usually when you and my dad were doing me heading. Stupid. 
different up there, don't they? Less like cheeky scavengers, more majestic. Yeah, they do. Are you okay? How did it go? I'm all right. No, don't hold me, love. It'll make me worse. Why did he have to come? Who? Leisha. Oh, don't be like that. I had to come, didn't I? I couldn't just sit at home. Why not? I wanted to help. What by saying me shamed and humiliated in there? Lisa, please. Look at me. Listening to me, if he's planning to murder her, why walk into a police station and announce to the assembled company that he's looking for her? Exactly. Join us for the concluding part of our drama, Case Sensitive, at night tonight. Well, next, we've more remarkable stories of life on the front line in military driving school. <laughs>